each year in the catchment we have individuals who make an outstanding contribution to land care, whether it's working away tirelessly in their own patch or finding new and creative ways of engaging people. Um, the Regional Land Care Awards give us an opportunity to celebrate those people and to highlight that activity. So this year we're following the stories of three very inspiring people. We have Colin, Janet and Trish who have all been nominated for an award in the individual land carer category which is always a highlight at the awards. Um, unfortunately only one can win but let's hear their stories and see who comes away with the award. So we're on our way to see Colin Dixon. We're in Mangrove Mountain which is on the central coast. Um, he's been working with the Mangrove Mountain and Districts Community Group here for a number of years uh, in a number of patches of bush in the area but also collecting and propagating seed that is local to the bushland and planting it back into the more degraded areas. You get the short one. <laughs> G'day guys. Hi, how are you going? Good. I'm Vanessa. Hi Vanessa, I'm Cole. Hi Cole, nice to meet you. Yeah, same. What's going on here? Oh, we're just collecting some seeds. Okay, what, what stage is it? This is a hakea, yep. this one. This if you were to tally it all up, there'd be a couple of kilometres of creek line all up that we've, that we've worked on in the last few years, either with the Landcare Group, with um, Landcare Volunteers, or, um, and work for the Dole Crews. In the last three years, we've put in over 5,000 plants, local plants, locally produced plants. I don't think you can class a project as, as proper bush regeneration unless you're using local seed stock. There's a bit of a myth about growing Australian natives that it's difficult. It's not. There's a couple of guidelines in your, in your suite, they'll grow. Carl turned up here with a participant for the work for the Dole team, Wesley I think it was at the time, and he'd get in and he'd work and he always seemed keen, very keen to learn anything he could. Um, interested, he'd come back and check things that were planted and all this sort of thing. And I thought he's, after 40 years of teaching, I picked, and I thought he's a really good potential. So then he started doing a few environmental courses and I said, keep it up, keep it up. Next thing he got a promotion and he was a team leader. I just found working with Margaret was, was so good, you know, and, and the amount of work she did, it sort of got me, or probably guilted me into um, coming back and volunteering my time over the last few years as well. He's just got a real feel for the bush. He's, he's keen to learn, he's interested in what's happening now, what's going to happen in the future, and what's happened in the past with plants. And uh, I just think that he's at a really good potential. I mean, you don't do the work to be cheered. Um, you do it for, for, for selfish reasons, pretty much, you know. You do it to make yourself feel good. But, um, but it's good to know, to know that other people take a notice, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Well, we're here to see Janet Fox. She's also been nominated for a Landcare Award and um, she's living up here at the back of Currajong, so let's go see her. We arrived in June 2007 and it was uh, quickly uh, brought to my attention that uh, we had a weed infestation all along um, the unnamed creek, which is our border on the uh, north. And fortunately, I saw a uh, sign okay. saying in the, in the Karajong village that there was an AGM for Hawkesbury Rainforest Network. I met a lot of like-minded people, all of my vintage, and they steered me in the, in the right direction of the Catchment Management Authority, and that's where I met Paul. And he came out and um, jumped for joy because a lot of the area is absolutely pristine. And he really was quite encouraging that I should apply for some grants. To manage the degraded streams that flow into Little Weenie Creek, because um, they were in really bad state with lantana and privet, da da da. And, uh, and he felt that um, we should concentrate on those uh, to stop any more uh, um, detrits or privet or lantana flowing into Little Weenie Creek. It's just a really good example of um, some of the successful work that needs doing in the Hawkesbury. She's very knowledgeable. I think it's really super. Um, I think she deserves recognition and I think it's just another good example of um, highlighting the good work that people are doing in the area. Just an inspiration really. We're on our way to Janolan Caves to see Trish Kidd. She, uh, she's been nominated for a Regional Landcare Award and 
she's working with a group of volunteers this weekend on a sycamore infestation that's a particular problem here at Genoma Caves. You know, I think a lot of people have fallen in love with Janolan Caves at some point, whether it was when they were three and their folks brought them down or, you know, they've come away for a weekend. Um, tried to focus on that iconic nature of the reserve, what the issues were that, that certainly had a capacity gap that wasn't being filled in regard to managing the weeds in, the, in the, both the short and the longer term. We have a significant site, but we really need to keep it that way and we can't ignore the, the scale of the problem. One of the bigger, the bigger weed problems is a sycamore maple tree, um, which has actually been spreading across a lot of the hill slopes now and um, for decades and now covers approximately 50 hectares of the reserve. It out-competes and then totally replaces the native vegetation. The Janolan Caves Land Care Group has started working to try and assist the Janolan Caves Trust and the National Parks and Wildlife Service. And um, in discussions with the Trust, developed a model that included free accommodation for coming and working for the weekend and feeding people and doing some educational and awareness raising with participants so they could you know, work in a high conservation asset area have a really nice social weekend away, but at the same time contribute to some really beneficial on-ground outcomes. I've been coming back now, it's nearly almost two years, so every time there's a, a weekend on, I try to free out my calendar, so love it up here. We're now into you know, year three on our ninth event. They're always fully subscribed with up to 25 people that come along and, and have a really nice weekend away, whilst at the same time benefiting the environment in an enormous, enormous way. Trish really deserves the recognition because she's put so much effort in into planning uh, the, the work, attracting volunteers from far and wide. She's worked hard at trying to win extra funding as well for the site. And then when people are on site, she's done everything from cutting the onions for the barbecue to showing them how to use their herbicide and their personal protection equipment. I find it very difficult to see things that I know are impacting upon natural systems and knowing no one's doing anything about it and walking away and not doing anything about it. So but I then feel obligated to try and assist and see it through to the end and that obviously translates into working a lot of volunteer hours but it doesn't bother me at all because if I wasn't doing it who else would be doing it? This award is presented each year to highlight an individual who has carried out or promoted land care through practical on ground or community awareness activities. This category always attracts very, very strong nominations and this year was no different. This year the judges have awarded the Individual Land Care Award to Janet Fox. Janet made a fantastic contribution as a volunteer working on her own property as well as more broadly with the Hawkesbury Rainforest Network. She's acted as a mentor to members of Hawkesbury Young Land Carers and she's a very worthy winner of this category. I'd like to thank um, many people, um, mainly the leeches of Weenie Creek have sucked me dry many, many times. <laughs> But mainly to uh, Hawkesbury Rainforest Network, which I um, got involved in very early on in my days in Remini Farm on, in Karajong. And from then I learned about the Catchment Management Authority and then I could apply for grants. Well, then I just took off. <laughs> I'm on my third grant at the moment and um, I've incorporated Green Corps, uh, the young, and uh, as many of my children's friends are, uh, and uh, I really find it in very invigorating and I feel very passionate about uh, clearing this beautiful bit of creek. Yeah. Thank you all. It's, um, it's really hard to choose a winner out of such strong candidates. I know the judges did struggle, but what clinched it for Janet was the fact that she had um, she'd done so well in engaging young people in her projects uh, and being a mentor to young people and training them on her property. Uh, that said, anyone who works in Landcare deserves recognition, deserves to be highlighted because without them we just couldn't get done the enormous amount of environmental work that needs to be done in the catchment. I was actually quite surprised to, to read how many Landcare groups along the Hawkesbury Nepean there are. 
and thrilled actually to see there's a hun over 100. We have a responsibility, uh, we're managers of the country and if, uh, you know, if, we're, if we're not fixing that place up so it's, it's good for the, for the next generation, uh, who's going to do that, you know?